Hello everyone, my name is Yong Zhao, Solution Architect for Keysight Security Solution Group. Today I'm going to demonstrate to you how to use Keysight Threat Simulator to verify the effectiveness of the AWS WAF deployment. So let's get started. Okay, what I'm going to go is I'm going to switch to AWS CloudFormation to deploy my agent, also automatically set up the AWS WAF application firewall. All right, this is my AWS. I click the Create Stack option, and I have already have a deployment CloudFormation JSON format uh, ready to go. So if I choose that, and then I can go ahead and deploy it. I'll give a name, say this is Keysight WAF Lab. And then I have a lot of information pre booting so I'm going to stick with that. I am resources used. Uh, now you can see my uh, deployment of stress simulator agent behind the AWS WAF is ongoing. So we'll come back in a few minutes. It will be all done. Now you can see that uh, the Keysight WAF lab uh, stack is uh, created completely. Now let's go to the EC2 to take a look at what has been uh, created. Uh, if I go to the uh, EC2 instances, and you can see that I have successfully uh, created the student TS WAF agent. If I go to the details, you can see that uh, this is the uh, instant information with the pu public IP, uh, which is the uh, elastic IP, and also the private IP. If you look at it, this is the, the private IP of 10.0.0.201, which is being deployed uh, in the WAF agent uh, subnet. If I switch to my uh, threat simulator screen, and you can see that this agent after the cloud formation is automatically discovered by my threat simulator. So if I click the agent here, and you can see all the information which is matching private IP, and then the public IP matching the elastic IPs. Now switching back to the AWS uh, EC2, what I want to give you an overview is uh, how the uh, how to apply the AWS uh, web services, web app, uh, application firewall services, especially the web app uh, ACL rules. The first thing you need to provision through my uh, cloud formation is the load balancer. So on the AWS, you need to create this TSALB, which is application load balancer. And then in the load balancer, you need to configure its uh, the listeners. Uh, in this case, I'm listening to 443, which is HTTPS. And then I'm uploading or using one of the self-signed certificate for because it's a web function, it will do the SSL uh, inspection or the content. So it needs a, a certificate uh, to do this sort of man in the middle proxy mode. And also it has a rule uh, which is point to the uh, target group, which take a let's take a look. So the target group is called TS agent. Again, for every target group, uh, you will see we have a target. This is a target 10.00201. If you remember, this is my uh, WAF TS agent uh, IP address, uh, IPs. And also, we are doing some house check. Uh, if you can see, this is we're using HTTPS for house check. Going back to the root set of the um, TS agent, you will see what is it. So basically, everything sent it to this uh, 443 listeners uh, will be forwarded to the TS agent. If you have a WAF uh, deployment, which is have mo protecting multiple web page, website it, uh, so you can create a much more complicated or complex uh, rule set to manage that, uh, what we call the multi-site setup. So you can do that as well. And then with the integrated service of the associated with the server load balancer or application load balancer, this is AWS uh, WAP ACL rules. As you can see, this is the uh, newer version of uh, what AWS called the WAF version 2. And you can see right now I have the rule set of AWS uh, managed rule set, uh, SQL injection common rule set, and another AWS managed rule set of what called the common rule set. Total, you can see there's a 900 different rules in those rule set. Now switching back to the AWS load balancer, one key information we need to have is uh, DNS name of this ALB or server load balancer. So let me copy this and get back to the uh, our threat simulator. Let's put the agent uh, behind the server load balancer. And this is an important step to do because all the 
our later on assessment is evaluate or assess the effectiveness of the AWS WAF rule. So we have to put the agent uh, behind the server load balancer. In order to do that, uh, I'm going to go to the agent page and click the settings. So the first thing we need to do is put in the FQDN, which is the DNS of the AWS SLB or ALB. And the host name page, I'm going to put in WAF agent. Again, this host name uh, is very, very important if you have a multiple site behind the server load balancer uh, or AWS WAF that each of the agent will have its unique host name be defined here. And then we switch the protocol to HTTPS and then put the uh, 443 at the port and uh, check the enable and save the configuration. So now you can see the load balancer is enabled. If we go back to the topology and we do a quick uh, service scan through the agent, just trying to make sure that uh, we have the proper service ports open for this agent so that we can uh, jump into the next step, which is create an assessment uh, for the WAF rules. All right, let's take a look. If I go to service, now it's good. So we, for the incoming, ports or incoming service port towards my agent behind the AWF. I have a 443 and port 80 open. But as you know that even though we have both uh, HV and HV ports open, but we know on the AWS server load balancer, we're only uh, listening to port 443. All right, let's set up AWS uh, WAF assessment scenario. Setting up uh, that on the Threat Simulator is quite straightforward. Uh, if you select the instrumentations, we're not going to do a full suite of a web application security assessment, which is over 200 security audits. So what we're going to select is a demo set of it, uh, which is have 11 audit, and then we're going to assign it, run this uh, assessment against the TS WAF agent behind the AWS WAF services. And then I'll give it a name for this security audit run as demo WAF web apps. And then we'll add it to the scenario. Before we run this assessment, I remember one thing. Originally, when we do the cloud formation, we um, configure the uh, AWS WAF, uh, Web ASL to including the uh, SQL injection and the common rule set, uh, those two AWS managed rule set. I think uh, it's, it's better to start with no rule set uh, to run the assessment, then we will apply, reapply to those rule set and, and see the difference. That's probably a, a better way to to look at the effect native, how the AWS WAF rules uh, apply to those uh, security assessment. So let's first get to the um, uh, AWS CLI uh, terminal windows and change our AWS WAF uh, web ACL rule set to empty first. So I have a script right written, and this one will basically remove all the AWS managed rule set for common rule set and SQL injection. Now, if we go back to the um, threat simulator, we'll start assessment uh, against uh, WAF without the rule set. Certainly what we will expect is all the security audit will, will pass. Uh, basically the traffic will pass and uh, the re expect the result will be to fail. So let's take a look. This normally the security uh, assessment uh, sec scenario run will take a, a couple minutes. So as you can see right now, the audit is running and we'll expect some result uh, pretty soon. So we'll be back. We're back. Now you can see that demo web application security uh, scenario assessment have been done. It's finished. We have total of 11 audits and all of them failed, which is expected because we don't have a security rule set. And in this list, you can see uh, we have a various uh, different uh, techniques uh, being exercised for those security audits, including the cross-site, uh, local file inclusions, SQL injections, 
and some uh, code ex uh, executions, uh, remote code extensions, parameter code ex executions, and uh, OS command injections. So it's a blended uh, of a typical um, OWASP top 10 web application attack uh, techniques. Now, if let's go back and restore the um, root set to the origin setup, which is the SQL injection and common root set. All right, if we go back and rerun this uh, security assessment against AWS WAF rule again, let's see what the result come out. We're back. Now the uh, demo web application security assessment run is finished. Uh, now you can see this time is uh, much better. So we have out of the 11 audits, we have uh, six passed, which means the uh, traffic is being blocked uh, or audit being blocked, and then five failed. If we go to the details, we can take a look at what, what is being uh, blocked, what being let it, let it pass. So most of the uh, cross site has been uh, properly uh, protected by AWS uh, WAF rule set, and the same as uh, uh, LFI, uh, local file. In, in, in inclusions, uh, what uh, was not being uh, protected or uh, let the let the audit pass through our Oracle Oracle database client system analyzer arbitrary file upload. So one of the fi file upload was allowed. One of the SQL injection was allowed. This is really built to the um, some of their we have find that uh, on the public cloud WAF services uh, some of their signatures are pretty rudimentary, pretty simple static rule set uh, versus uh, more up-to-date dynamic nature of uh, threat simulator can offer from a signature perspective. So that's why they are not uh, blocking all our um, uh, SQL injection signatures. Uh, but you do see that uh, there's some uh, like this number eight, this SQL injection was properly blocked by the AWS uh, web rule. Certainly some of the OS command uh, injections and the code executions, those are the rule, uh, those are the audits, uh, which is was not properly addressed by the uh, AWS rules. In the coming videos, I'm going to show you how to write your own rules uh, to address those issues. Before we conclude this, uh, let's go back to the uh, AWS. This is basically um, on the AWS uh, uh, WAF, WAF ACL rule set, uh, there's a cloud watch, and you can see on this chart, you can see those, uh, the my very first run, uh, you can see eight and three, uh, together is uh, 11 allowed. Uh, remember that was a time which we don't have uh, any uh, SQL injection or common rule set uh, blocking enabled. And then the last one, you can see this one, clearly uh, we have the proper SQL injection and common rule set, um, applied and uh, we can see six total six are blocked uh, five of them blocked due to the uh, common rule set and uh, one of the blocked due to the uh, SQL injection so this will conclude our assessment uh, effectiveness uh, using threat simulator hope you enjoy it.